In this lesson, I'll be describing a first-hand investigation or experiment looking at decarbonating soft drink. And what you have here is a range of different soft drinks, and in those soft drinks is carbon dioxide. So we're looking at taking carbon dioxide out of the soft drink, because when you open it, you see the bubbles, and that's the CO2 gas coming off. So carbon dioxide is actually added to soft drinks to give them their fizz and their bubbles. And the carbon dioxide is dissolved under pressure in the can or the vessel in the bottle as well. Now, as soon as the container is opened, the pressure is reduced, okay, and the carbon dioxide gas is released or dissoluted. So this word just means that a gas is coming out of liquid. So the CO2 will come out of the drink. Now, if the drink is left open to the atmosphere, the carbon dioxide gas will continue to leave the solution, and eventually that drink will go flat. So you see this when you pour a glass of soft drink, if you have a, quite a big bottle. Over time, the carbon dioxide gas will dissolute or go into the atmosphere, and the rate of dissolution of bubbles will actually slow down eventually. So a lot will come off initially, but that will that will slow down and eventually actually stop until the soft drink is so flat that it's not very nice to drink. So the drink still contains a small amount of dissolved carbon dioxide, but it has gone flat and it's lost its fizz. And we say that it's then decarbonated. So this word is talking about the loss of carbon dioxide gas. Now the amount of carbon dioxide gas lost in the decarbonation of a soft drink can be determined by measuring the mass lost from a measured quantity of the drink. So for example, 375 mils for a can. And you guys can, if you have a set of scales in your bathroom or in your kitchen, you guys can actually try this experiment at home. It's really quite simple. So let's have a look at the experiment and the method. So what we're going to going to do is we weigh a can, let's say we take a, a can of uh, soda, soft drink, 375 ml can, of carbonated fizzy soft drink, whichever one you like, and record the mass. Okay, so don't open it, put it on the scales here, and weigh it, and that's your mass one. So that's the total mass of the can, the liquid, and the carbon dioxide. The second step is to open the top of the soft drink can, and be careful not to spill any liquid because this will change your results. Then what you'll do is reweigh the can at regular intervals and name these two, three, four, five, etc. Uh, however many that you have time to weigh at different time points and you need to record these observations. Now what you'll find as re the results, as you may well guess, the mass will initially decrease because the bubbles and the fizz are coming out of the drink. Now eventually the mass will no longer show a significant change because gaseous CO2 will come to equilibrium. Now if you remember looking at CO2 equilibrium, it actually has many different types of equilibria, um, but one of which is CO2 gas in equilibrium with CO2 aqueous, AQ, okay? Now, to find the mass of carbon dioxide, what you'll do is subtract the final recorded mass, which is the can and the liquid, from mass one, which is the can and the liquid and all of the gas that was there to start with. So mass final minus mass initial is going to be the amount of CO2 gas that's been evolved after you've opened it and it's been sitting there for a while. So we now need to find the number of moles of carbon dioxide involved and then the volume of carbon dioxide that's been evolved. So for this we'll need a few equations. So our first equation we need to remember, the number of moles equals the mass divided by the molar mass. Okay. So N is M for mass over MM for molar mass. Uh, another equation we need is the volume. So the volume of carbon dioxide equals the number of moles times the molar volume. So to write this, we would write V for volume 
equals number of moles, N, times the molar volume, which is V, with a lower uh, a subscript M for molar volume. Now, the molar volume uh, we need to remember, but you'll usually get given these numbers in a data sheet. So the molar volume is a constant. Now, at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 uh, kilopascals, which is approximately uh, room pressure, it's 24.79 litres per mole. And at zero degrees and atmospheric pressure, it's or approximate, it's 22.71 litres per mole. So when you're doing equations, you'll need to remember these three. Uh, when you're trying to calculate moles and volume, you'll need to remember these three equations. So, you may also express the amount of gas given off as a percentage of the soft drink. So you need to know the volume of the soft drink that you started with. Okay, so that's the theory about uh, this experiment. And I've given you the general results that you'll get from this experiment. So now let's look at a few examples and a few questions and how we, ca how we actually do these calculations. So, question four, 2.8 grams weight loss was recorded in this experiment. The experiment was carried out at 25 degrees and 100 kPa. Calculate the volume of gas released from the soft drink. So, let's look at it. The molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44.01. So that's just by adding up one carbon, which is 12, plus two oxygens, which is two times 16, approximately, is going to be 44 grams. Now the number of moles will be the mass over the molar mass, so 2.8, which we've been given in the question, divided by 44.01. So, and the other information that we need to consider, because we're looking for a volume, is that one mole of any gas will occupy 24.79 litres at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa. So that's our equation, volume is moles times molar volume. So for this question, that's our molar volume. So the CO2 released will be from here, the number of moles, 2.8 divided by 44.01 times the molar volume, because we've just gone and put two equations together, because the common denominator here is moles, okay? And what we have to do is that calculation now. So if we put those numbers into our calculator, what we find is that the answer is 1.58 litres of carbon di dioxide gas has been released from the soft drink in this experiment. So this is the general uh, way that we do these equations. So the next few questions will be quite similar. So question five. A group of students carried out the decarbonation of a bottle of soft drink and found that the mass of the container decreased by 2.5 grams. Assume all of the weight loss is due to carbon dioxide escaping. Part A, how many moles of carbon dioxide were lost from the soft drink? So we don't need to go on and look at volume, we just need to find the moles. So the moles is the mass over the molar mass, so it's 2.5 grams, which is the mass that was lost over the molar mass of carbon dioxide, 44, and doing that calculation, we find that it's 0 0.06 mole. Part B, what volume would this mass of carbon dioxide occupy at 25 degrees and 100 kPa? So now we have to use the next equation and find the volume. So the volume will be 0 0.06 moles, which we just found in part A, times by the molar volume at 25 degrees and 100 kPa, which is 24.79. And we calculate that the volume will be 1.4 litres of carbon dioxide gas. Question six. A bottle of open soft drink is warmed gently in a water bath. Bubbles of carbon dioxide are observed to escape at a greater rate as the temperature is increased. Write an equation for the dissolution equilibrium of carbon dioxide in water. Now remembering that dissolution means a gas is coming out of a liquid. So 
that's our equilibrium equation. Carbon dioxide gas is in equilibrium with carbon dioxide dissolved or aqueous. So that's the equation for part A. So part B, use the experimental observations to determine whether this equilibrium is endothermic or exothermic, okay, from the experiment. So now we have to think about the equilibrium that's going on in the solution and whether heat is being drawn in or sent out. Now, the equilibrium is exothermic because the equilibrium will be reversed as the temperature is increased. So, as you can see from the equation, the, uh, the equilibrium, yes, it won't go forward, it will go towards the CO2 gas rather than the CO2 aqueous. So on to question seven now. Many drinks contain dissolved carbon dioxide in equilibrium with gaseous carbon dioxide. And that's according to these two equations that we learned earlier in the theory section. So carbon dioxide gas going to carbon dioxide aqueous. And here's the heat of the reaction. Because it's exothermic, 19 kilojoules of heat will be given off in this reaction. So, and also looking at the second equilibrium in these solutions, carbon dioxide gas and water going to carbonic acid, aqueous. So, part A, explain why bubbles of CO2 come out of solution when a can or bottle is opened. Now, when you open a can, the pressure will be decreased. So the equilibrium will have to shift to counteract that change. So according to Le Chatelier's principle, if you change the pressure, you'll change the equilibrium. So what's going to happen is CO2 gas will be produced and bubbles will form. So let's look at the equations because they'll help us see why this is actually happening. So if you're decreasing the pressure, okay, what's going to happen to the equilibrium is that it's going to want to go towards uh, more molecules because it has more space to fill. So if we look at this second equation, where are there more molecules on the reactant side or on the product side? There's more on the reactant side. So that's why our equilibrium will go towards the left and produce CO2. And that's why we see the bubbles and when we open a can and when we drink the soft drink because the equilibrium is actually shifting. So every time you have a soft drink, you're actually seeing a different equilibria occurring. So now part B for this question. Explain why fizzy drinks go flatter than cold fizzy drinks. So, it's an exothermic reaction, which we've seen from our equation at the top. So it's giving out heat. So warm temperatures cause the equilibrium to shift to the left and form CO2 gas. So as you can see from this equation, the equilibrium is actually going to the left. So if you think about it, if we're adding heat to this, the equation, the reaction, is actually going to want to counteract it, according to Le Chatelier's principle. And so therefore, to disperse this extra heat, the equilibrium will shift to the left and you'll get more CO2 gas produced. So that concludes the discussion about a first-hand investigation of decarbonation of soft drinks.